Vicky Lani and Yaseta have asked me to share a short message this afternoon. I'm sure you'd all be glad that it's going to be short. But it's in relation to the commitment that they are making to each other today. That of joining their two individual lives to become one in covenant marriage. Today as a couple they begin a new chapter in their life. This is a fresh start, a new beginning, and a very exciting time for them both. I can tell it's an exciting time because they haven't stopped smiling since the moment they've been together down the front. So they are excited. And they're obviously very serious about what they're doing today. And I can tell that they're serious because the scripture that they chose to be read out at the ceremony is pretty hard hitting. It's not an easy scripture to take. In fact, many people today would reject that scripture. Today, the words, wives submit to your husbands, are not the kind of words that many brides want to hear on their wedding day. Did you choose that scripture? Just, you did. Okay, I thought so. Did you know about that? No, it's checking. But we know that this is from the Bible, therefore it is the truth. And, uh, and we also know that God created marriage to be a good thing. So if he put that in the Bible, it's not to destroy your marriage, not to destroy your freedom, it's, it's to be... Uh, to help you in your marriage, to help you live a life that's pleasing to God and to live an enjoyable life together and enjoy your marriage. God created marriage to be good. So for the next few moments, I want us to briefly take a look at Ephesians 5 to see what it's really saying to us. And of course, the word that most people don't like there is that word submit. Many don't like this word because we don't want anybody telling us what to do. We want to be in control of our own lives. But Vigilani and Eseta have chosen to base their marriage on the Word of God. And the good news for you today, Eseta, is, is that this passage of Scripture was not written to make life difficult for you. And rather than me explaining what the word submit means, I thought that it would be more helpful to say a few thoughts on what the word submit does not mean. Submission does not mean that you become a slave to your husband. Sorry about that. <laughs> Submission does not make you a second-class citizen. It does not mean that you must suffer in silence or lose your identity or your personality. See, I believe that the key element of this passage of Scripture is found in verse 31. And it says, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two become one flesh. You see, from this day on, Vikulani and Aseta are no longer individuals. Today they become one. Their relationship goes to a whole new level. They are now Team Cook. And, and for that team to work together efficiently, they must both know their place. They must both know their role. They must both know what they need to do in order to help and support and please the other. It's not about their individual lives anymore. They must know their responsibilities. They must know what God requires of them and how they fit together. See, submission speaks to us of coming under another's authority. But as we know, everyone who is in a position of authority must be worthy of that position. They must be worthy of holding that authority. They must take it seriously. They must work on it daily. And they must continue to grow in their capacity and their ability on a daily basis. And that, my friend, is where you come in. I know that you love Aseta and that you will take this responsibility seriously. The Bible says that you are to love her as Christ loves his church. Christ loved the church so much that he laid down his life for it. You are to love her as you love yourself. You are to make sacrifices for her protect her, cherish her, invest in her, because the more you love her, the more she will honor you and the more she will respect you. From this day on, for both of you, your focus must shift from yourself to one another, because the more you put into your marriage, the more you'll get out of it. The more you love, the more you will be loved. The more you sow, the more you will reap. The more you give, the more you will get. And the more you sacrifice, the more you will gain. There will always be challenges in married life, but your love for each other will be the catalyst 
that causes you to overcome any challenge. It will enable you to move on and continue to grow as individuals and as a couple. The great thing about choosing to love is that it comes with so much reward. And you will always receive back far more in return than you can ever give. So Vikilani and Aseta, as you begin this journey today, basing your lives together on this foundation, the foundation of love, the foundation of honour, the foundation of respect, and the foundation of submitting to one another and to the authority uh, of Vikilani, as you always choose to honour God and each other, you're in for the journey of a lifetime. There. I said it wasn't going to be too long. It kept to my word. So at this point, I'd like to ask, who gives Heseta to Vikilani? Awesome. Thank you so much. Now we come to the most important part of today's proceedings, the wedding vows. So I'm going to ask you first, and at this point, you may hold hands, which I know is very exciting. You can pass the flowers back. Vigilani, will you take a setter as your wife in Christian marriage, live according to God's plan and purpose, accepting headship of your home, will you love her, comfort her, protect her, honor her, and keep her in trials and in blessing, forsaking all others, keep only to her as long as you both shall live. I do. That was good. Sorry, I didn't hear it the first time. I do. <laughs> Seta, will you take Vigilani as your husband in Christian marriage and live according to God's plan and purpose? Recognizing his headship of your home, will you love him, comfort him, help him, honor him, cherish him in trials and in blessing, forsaking all others, keep only to him so long as you both shall live? I do. Good. <laughs> Very quiet, but we got there. I'd like you all to stand again please as Vigilani and Nesetta exchange their marriage <coughs> vows. Before God, our family and friends, I'm so blessed to take you as my wife. All that I am and all that I have, I give to you. All my goals and ambitions I will share with you. All my dreams and plans I will make with you. All my life I will cherish you, respect and protect you. Through the hard times I will pray with you. Through the good times I will love you. Always encouraging you and leading you, praying with you and for you. As we seek God, of God's will for our lives. You are my heart's desire. All my life, it will be you and no other. the exchanging of rings. Rings are a symbol, a sign of unbroken unity just as your love for one another must be. They are a seal and a reminder of this everlasting agreement, a promise of the covenant vows that you have declared to each other today before God, family and friends. I 
give you this ring as a symbol of my love for you and a sign of my promise. And with this ring, I seal all that I have vowed to you this day. I give you my name and take into you my fear as my wife. party will now sign the marriage register. <laughs> 